Mr. Love. I cut the sentence even in half what was recommended. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Love, I've done all I can and will do for you. Write right this in. Or you're going to go for longer. If you want to go for longer, then keep it up. Right now. File 22-6486FH. Uh, Jeremiah Buffalo, we're going on behalf of Mr. Love, who is seated to my right. All right, and uh, have you had a chance to review the updated uh, uh, PSI? Uh, yes, Your Honor, I have. Conditions or corrections today? Uh, yes, Your Honor, uh, we would add that, uh, correct, Mr. Uh, Love has completed the assessment. Um, there uh, was an, a hiccup with uh, them not releasing it due to his inability to pay. Um, we have very recently since forwarded that to the probation department. Uh, there, uh, in that assessment, were no requirements uh, for any sort of counseling or anything like that that he would have failed to do. Uh, and he has uh, made payments on his fines and costs as well since uh, the issuing of that PSI, Your Honor. I believe there's only approximately $70, uh, $40 that are remaining. Uh, Your Honor, we would ask for a very brief adjournment uh, to allow for those things to catch up uh, with uh, Mr. Love's file uh, and potentially have him uh, successfully complete his delay of sentence. Well, I, I, I had the assessment dated March 25th of 2024. Is that the one you're talking about? Yes, Your Honor, it is. So completed after the PSI. And I don't know what you mean it doesn't make any recommendations. It says recommendation are related to individual and group counseling related to emotional regulation, skill development, interpersonal skill interactions, problem solving skills, vocational and aptitudes, career planning, exploration assessment, as well as financial literacy. That doesn't sound like no recommendation to me. I missed that, Your Honor. <coughs> All right, Mr. Uh, Love, we don't have to make a statement today. Is there anything you want to say? Yes, sir. Uh, so I didn't stand up. Uh, yes, so I was unaware that I had to follow anything when I talked to the assessment people. They were did you read this assessment? I, I actually asked for minds to send it to me, and they told me that I wasn't allowed to receive it, that only my probation officer can have it. And when I, when I did the assessment, they never told me, hey, you have to do these things. You know, and I called, I went up there twice, and they just say, congratulations and good luck, basically. Mr. Mr. Love, can I ask you, what did you do that I asked you to do during this last year? Did you get a job? Yes, sir. When? Uh, I got a job just recently. I was working at, well, I mean, more than just recently. I worked a few months before that. I worked at McDonald's. I worked with a couple of staffing agencies. Your Honor, it's been very hard for me to grab a job with this felony. I know that you want me to hold on to a job. In my nature, that's how I am. That's what I was doing before this even happened. But because so many, because of the nature of the felony, on my record, I keep getting denied jobs. So only thing that I am even getting denied jobs in staffing agencies, but I have hold, I've had held on to a couple jobs. Right now I'm with a staffing agency, but laid off because it was only a two week employment for a line that they had to catch up on. And then they laid me off and I've been waiting and waiting because that's all I really want to do, Your Honor. I just want to get this passed so I can start working again. If I may, Your Honor, is the court in possession of the uh, email from the probation officer downstate, Mr. Secor, that uh, indicates that he has, uh, uh, that Mr. Love has had employment on and off? No, I uh, again, it was, report. It, it was, it was barely recently uh, that uh, the email was uh, received and forwarded to your probation department. And I, like this morning recently, Your Honor. Well, I got the pre-sentence report and I got the, the, uh, the assessment that makes recommendations. If there's an email you want me to re read, somebody better give it to me. Uh, yeah, I don't have the, the hard copy here. Yeah. All right, All right Mr. Rich, any, or I'm sorry, Mr. Juliet, any recommendations for the people? Your Honor, I would ask that the delay be revoked, um, probation be discharged, unsuccessful, six months in jail. Uh, I would know for the court that back when uh, uh, he was sentenced on the delay, the court waived a number of costs. So. The fact that he hasn't made well completed his, his financial obligations is concerning. Um, and in his 
in elocution, I guess he he's, he did say that he's he's had jobs, but they've been on and off. So uh, that's concerning that he can't keep employment, not so much that he can't get employment. Um, so I guess I would, I would ask the, the, the way be revoked and have one better. Well, Mr. Love, you're here today after a one-year delay of sentence for a felony crime of uh, resisting or, assault or assaulting, obstructing police. <clears throat> I, um, I gave you a lot of consideration a year ago and uh, didn't ask you to do a whole lot, and you did even less than I asked. You know, you, you didn't maintain employment, and the excuses you're giving me here today are pretty weak. There's a lot of people with worse records than you that are able to maintain work. And uh, also, I cut your fines down about as low as I possibly could. In fact, I did. The lowest I could legally assess. And you didn't pay them in a year. And th these were doable. These, these were doable if you were picking up cans. Plus, you were supposed to get an assessment. You don't do that until like a couple of weeks ago. And then you're here today telling me and I don't have to do anything with it, but I'm reading a bunch of stuff that you have to do to address the issues that brought you before the court. And you know when you should have done those is a year ago. That's why we put you on a delay for a year so that you can do this on the front end and go to counseling and get in a better spot. Not so you can come once you find out you're in trouble and then you go and get one. It is not how that works on you. <clears throat> I can't possibly find that you have successfully completed this delay. So, Mr. Love, you have not successfully completed the delay, so we do have to sentence you on the underlying offense. The felony conviction for resisting obstructing police will enter. The guidelines are zero to nine months. <clears throat> and... Um, I'm going to order that you serve three months in the Sheboygan County Jail. I'll give you credit for three days previously. That's within the guidelines. And if you want to appeal, you have to file an application with the Court of Appeals. If you want a lawyer, you have to ask within 42 days. Any amounts that are unpaid will remain due in Owing on the judgments. Good luck to you, Mr. Lowe. Oh. I cut the sentence even in half what was recommended. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Love, I've done all I can please, and will do for you. Don't write this in. Or you're going to go for longer. If you want to go for longer, then keep it up. Right now. Exit my courtroom, sir. My right for purposes of plea taking. Um, we do have a signed advice rights form and a signed written plea agreement. I'm also going to hand the court an affidavit or complete an affidavit. Uh, this is no contest plea due to constant domestic violence. Third, may, I remain charged to be dismissed by the acceptance of that plea. So I'm going to hand it to the court's bailiff um, to sign the base rights form. I'll date it today's date, 4 9. Sign the plea agreement and an affidavit. All right. And the reason for no contest plea? Uh, lack of independent memory of the events that gave rise to. to can I? And yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, it does look like there's two two affidavits. Oh. All right, Mr. Smith, would you please stand and as best you can raise your right hand for me? Just swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, self guy. Yes, sir. Okay, you can be seated, sir. Is your name Cody Addison Smith? Yes. All right. And Mr. Smith, a uh, no contest plea. I won't ask you about what happened. I'll review this affidavit. It's been marked as joint exhibit. But I will ask you a lot of questions just to make sure that you understand uh, what's going on and, and uh, that I can answer any questions that you have. So my first question is, do you understand that a, a no contest plea has the same effect as a guilty plea in terms of you being convicted of the offenses, in my authority or jurisdiction to sentence you? Do you yes. Understand? All right. And um, for that reason, it's an important hearing and you waive rights by entering a plea. So listen carefully. If you have a question, ask me. If you need to talk to your attorney some more, uh, just let me know. 
Now, in both these files, you're pleading no contest to uh, domestic violence, third offense. And that is a mis that's a felony punishable by up to five years and or a $5,000 fine. And with uh, one of them being committed while you were on bond for the other, it would be discretionary consecutive sentencing, meaning the maximum penalty that you could face by law would be 10 years in prison. Do you understand that? Yes. All right. Did you read and understand the rights listed on the advice of rights form? Yes. And you signed that form? Yes, sir. Do you understand this lists the rights that you give up when you enter a plea? Yes. Do you have any question about any of those rights? No, I do not. Do you wish to waive those rights and enter a plea according to this agreement? Yes. Now, if I accept your plea, you can't come back later and tell me that it wasn't your own free choice for any reason, including threats made to you or promises outside the terms of the agreement. Do you understand that? Yes. All right. Now, also, when you plead no contest, you lose the right to appeal. If you wanted to appeal later on, you have to seek permission by filing an application. And the types of issues you could raise on appeal are very limited, much more limited than if you were convicted after a trial. Do you understand this? Yes, I do. All right. Now, the plea agreement provides in exchange for your plea of no contest to, to one count in each file of domestic violence for defense. The prosecutor will dismiss the remaining charges. There's a, any weapons seized to be forfeited in the agency that seized them. And there's a sentence agreement for a county jail cap with concurrent sentencing. Do you understand the terms of that plea agreement? Yes, I do. Mr. Clean, is that a full, fair, and accurate statement of his terms? Yes, sir. Ms. Goodrich? Yes. All right, Mr. Smith, that sentence agreement is not binding on me. If I don't want to follow it, I wouldn't have to. But if I did not follow it, you'd be allowed to withdraw your plea. Do you understand that? Yes. Now, that is unless you do something else wrong between now and the sentencing. If you don't show up for court, you violate your bond, or you commit a new crime, something like that, then your misconduct would mean I don't have to follow the agreement, but you would have lost your right to a drug. Do you understand that? Yes. Other than the plea agreement, has anybody promised you anything to get you to plead no contest? No, they have not. Has anybody threatened you? No. Is it your own free choice to enter that? Yes, it is. Knowing all this, then, how do you wish to plead and file 23-6593, the charge of domestic violence, third offense? Guilty, not guilty, or no contest? No contest. And how do you wish to plead to the charge and file 23-6639 to the charge of domestic violence, third offense? Guilty, not guilty, or no contest? No contest. <laughs> all right. And I have reviewed... Um, that's been marked as joint exhibit one, and I do believe it establishes a factual basis uh, for both files for domestic uh, violence and also the um, the affidavit lists a prior in 2021, but also Mr. Smith, did you have a prior uh, domestic abuse conviction from 20? Oh, that was the 2021. Did you have a prior one from 2008? Not that I can recall, sir. In the, the third offense notice, Mr. Cleon lists a 2022 domestic abuse and a 2008 assault conviction. Yes. I believe those were the predicate priors. Okay, Mr. Smith, did you have a conviction for an assault of crime in 2008? If I did, I do not recall what it was for. It doesn't really give me much information, Ms. Goodrich, in the offense notes. That's in seeing the. <clears throat> I guess through the record conviction that does refresh Mr. Smith's memory of a sentence we gave 2009. All right, so Mr. Smith, you don't contest that uh, you've got two prior assault and convictions that makes this a third offense to you? No, sir. All right, Mr. Clay, you satisfied with the factual basis? I am. Mr. Yes. <clears throat> And Mr. Clean, are you aware of any other promises that are I'm not. Mr. No, not. Mr. Clean, do you believe I complied with 6.302? Or has. Mr. Yes. All right, Mr. Smith, I find that your pleas are knowingly, understandingly, and voluntarily made, and that there is a sufficient basis in fact and law to believe that you're guilty of those offenses. 
So we'll, uh, I'll accept your plea to both files. Um, I could schedule sentencing for the 14th at 1.10 in the afternoon. And Mr. Smith, you'll have to cooperate with an interview with the probation department so they can write a report for me before the sentencing. And um, Mr. Klain can give you some more information about helping you with that connection. And uh, Mr. Klain, did you have a request? I did, Your Honor. With regards to bond in these two cases, the court was aware there's a sentence agreement for one year of incarceration concurrent. Mr. Smith has served 15 months of pretrial incarceration. Um, um, so well in excess of the agreed upon amount, uh, Mr. Smith's uh, plan is to go back to Wisconsin where he has lived, live with his father. So I'm making two requests. First, that bond be set um, as a personal bond um, with the provision that he go to Wisconsin and stay there. And secondly, that um, he'd be allowed to leave the state. And we're also making the request that uh, on the 14th, if there's no need for further incarceration or no reason to call the sentence agreement that Mr. Smith be allowed to appear for that hearing by Zoom. All right, Ms. Goodrich, on behalf of the people. I have the victim supports that uh, request for his release and uh, it would benefit her and children to uh, get some financial support uh, from the defendant. Um, on behalf of the people, uh, I support the request. I think it'd be very helpful to see uh, his behavior between now and sentencing in order to determine the appropriate sentence. All right. Well, Mr. Smith, um, I think, and now I've I've reviewed some of the more facts of the case as well, and the, the uh, sentence agreement and the time that you have already served. I'm going to enter a personal recognizance bond, five thousand dollars, in both files. You don't have to post that amount. That's the amount you'd have to pay as a penalty if you don't appear. And the conditions will be that you are allowed to leave the state to go to Wisconsin, and we're going to expect that you do. And uh, well, I, I don't think I can make that a condition of bond. I mean, I it's not a condition of bond. Punishment is not a value. Is that? I'm not asking to be banished from right. the state of Michigan. We're going to allow to. Uh, we're going to allow you to go to Wisconsin. Uh, the and it'll be standard conditions along with the special condition of no contact with the victim. And I will allow Mr. Smith to appear by Zoom for that sentencing if he waives his right to be personally present. So Mr. Smith, you would have the right to be personally present for your sentencing on a felony case. If you wanna waive that and appear by video from Wisconsin for that sentencing, I'm okay with that. Are you okay with that? Yes, I am. All right. Now that's conditioned on you making sure you get that interview done with the probation department. Okay. okay. All, right. All right, we'll see you then. Next, we've got People versus Timothy Schmack, file 24 6802 FH. We're here for an arraignment. Um, I suppose we should, we should first address Mr. Schmack had filed a motion uh, to discharge counsel and represent himself. Mr. Schmack, are you still wanting to proceed in that fashion or no? No, sir, I'm happy with Mr. Wargo's uh, right, representation. So we'll, we'll treat that motion as withdrawn. And we're here for purposes of arraignment, Mr. Wargo, is the Forensic Center referral requested? Uh, no, Your Honor. And uh, the prosecution has advanced a, a plea agreement uh, that we uh, have accepted. Um, uh, it has been reduced to writing, Your Honor. Uh, if I uh, may approach or if I may present to your bailiff. Sure, <coughs> Uh, Mr. Schmack, would you please stand and raise your right hand, especially for me? Yes, sir. I just swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so I've got it. Yes, sir. Okay, you can be seated. And Mr. Schmack, a guilty plea hearing is an important event. It includes the waiver of constitutional rights that you have, so I want you to listen carefully. At any time, if you've got doubts, questions, or hesitations, let me know. If you need some more time to talk to your lawyer, let me know. I have to advise you that the maximum penalty for failing to comply with the Registration Act is four years and or a $2,000 fine. Do you understand that maximum penalty? Yes, sir. All right. If you plead guilty, you will not have a trial and you're gonna give up, you would give up the rights that you would have at that trial. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. I wanna remind you of the most important of those rights. 
You have the right to be tried by a jury and at that trial be presumed innocent unless and until the prosecutor proved you guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. <clears throat> you would have the right to um, uh, be to have the witnesses against you appear and you'd have the right to question them. You would have the right to have witnesses in your own defense and have me order them to show up. You'd also have the right to testify in your own defense or to remain silent and not have your silence used against you in any way. Do you understand all those rights? Yes, sir. Do you wish to waive those rights and enter a plea according to the agreement, sir? Yes, I do, Your Honor. If I if I accept your plea, <clears throat> you can't come back later and tell me that it's not your own free choice for any reason at all, including threats made to you or promises outside the plea agreement or any other reason at all. Do you understand that? I understand that, Your Honor. Also, when you plead guilty, you lose the right to appeal. If you wanted to appeal, you'd have to get permission by filing an application. And the types of issues you could raise on an appeal after a guilty plea are much more limited than if you were went to trial and if you were convicted. Do you understand that? I do, Your Honor. <clears throat> okay, the plea agreement provides an exchange for the charge I outlined for you. Plead guilty to that. The prosecutor will dismiss the habitual notice. <clears throat> And there's a sentence agreement for no additional immediate jail, <clears throat> credit for time served. And you would have to report the current address and become compliant with the sex offender registry before you're released from the jail. Do you understand the terms of that plea agreement? I do, Your Honor. Mr. Wurgo, is that a full, fair, and accurate statement of his terms? Yes, Your Honor, it is. Ms. Goodrich? Yes. Mr. Schmack, that sentence agreement is not binding on me. If I did not want to follow it, I wouldn't have to. But if I didn't follow it, you'd be allowed to withdraw your plea. Do you understand that? I do, Your Honor. Now, that's unless you engage in some misconduct between now and sentencing, in which case, uh, you let's say you don't show up to court, you abscond on your bond, or you violate conditions of your bond, or you commit a new crime. By that type of misconduct, you would lose the right to withdraw your plea, even if I didn't follow the sentence agreement. Do you understand that? I do, Your Honor. Other than that plea agreement, has anybody promised you anything else to get you to plead guilty? No, sir. Has anybody threatened you to make it? No. Is doing so your own free choice? It is, Your Honor. Knowing all this, how do you wish to plead to the charge for failing to comply with sex offender registration? Guilty, Your Honor. Are you uh, subject to the provisions of that registration act, sir? Yes, I am. And uh, does that, uh, do your duties under that act include updating your current address within a certain time frame? Yes, 72 hours, sir. Okay. And did you change your address and fail to make that update within that time frame? Well, Mr. Work, oh, you know the facts better than I do. If you want to assist with the facts, you'll be assisted. Yes, if I could just have a brief moment, Your Honor. Sure. Um, uh, Mr. Schmack, uh, in November of last year, uh, uh, you were working downstate, is that correct? Um, and did you fail to update your SORA registry with that new address? I did. Your Honor, I believe that satisfies. All right, Ms. Goodrich, you satisfied? Yes. All right, Mr. Wurgo, are you aware of any other promises, threats, or inducements? No, Your Honor. Ms. Goodrich? No, Your Honor. <clears throat> and Mr. Wurgo, in your judgment, has the court complied with MCR 6.302? It has, Your Honor. Ms. Goodrich? Yes. <clears throat> All right, Mr. Schmack, I find that your plea is knowingly, understandingly, and voluntarily made, and that there is a sufficient basis in fact and law for me to believe you are guilty of that offense. So I will accept your plea. And we can schedule sentencing for uh, May 14th at 10.50 in the morning. And you'll have to um, cooperate with, the, with an interview with the probation department so they can prepare a pre-sentence report for me. Okay. All right. And Mr. Wargo, anything further? Um, no, Your Honor. Ms. Goodrich? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. All right. We'll see you then, sir. Um, uh, Your Honor, uh, Mr. Sch I'm so sorry. Uh, Mr. Schmack uh, is uh, currently the, his bond was uh, uh, he wasn't given bond. With this plea and the uh, pending uh, sentence agreement for no jail, would a uh, bond uh, in personal recognizance be a possibility? Well, I mean, he was given a bond. Um, I mean, I said it. <clears throat> this is not a no bond available case. So right now it's ten thousand dollars cash or surety. Um, well, I suppose, how, how are we to accomplish logistically making sure that he's compliant on the registry before release from jail? I guess what I'd rather do is, why don't we get him compliant with the registry? When that is verified, then you and the prosecutor can submit a stipulation to me for a personal bond. I'd be happy to sign it. Beautiful, Your Honor. Thank you. All right.
So, Mr. Schmack, you're all set, sir, and uh, and Mr. Virgo can help you with that. Once we get you compliant on the registry, we'll we'll sign it to get you out of jail. But then you do have to show up for that sentencing date. Okay? Yes, sir. And um, up next, we've got people be Marissa Johnson. Two four dash six eight one two F H for arraignments. Uh, Mr. Rigo, a chance to review the information and questions. Uh, yes, Your Honor, and we would waive its reading. Um, Your Honor, I would also inform the court uh, that uh, we have reached a plea agreement with the prosecution, and uh, I it has been reduced to writing. I am signing now, and if I may present to your bailiff. Okay, is the forensic center referral requested? No, Your Honor. <laughs> All right, Ms. Johnson, if you could would please uh, stand and especially can raise your right hand for me. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so the guy. Yes. Okay, you can be seated. Are you Marissa May Johnson? I am. <clears throat> Ms. Johnson, a guilty plea hearing is an important event because you've got a lot of rights that you waive when you enter a guilty plea. So I want you to listen. If you have a question, ask me. If you need more time with Mr. Workout, you can just say so at any time. Okay. okay. Uh, I have to advise you the maximum penalty that you can face for the charge of possession of methamphetamine. It's a felony crime in Michigan. It's punishable by a maximum of 10 years in prison and or $15,000 fine. Do you understand the maximum penalty that you can face? Yes. Are you on probation or parole? No. Were you on bond for any other felony at the time of this incident? No. Do you understand if you plead guilty, you won't have a trial and you'll be giving up the rights that you would have had at trial? Yes. I want to remind you of some of the more important of those rights. You'd have the right to be tried by a jury and at that trial to be presumed innocent unless and until the prosecutor proved your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. You'd have the right to have the witnesses against you appear and to have the right to question those witnesses. You'd have the right to present witnesses in your own defense and have me order them to show up. You'd have the right to testify in your own defense, order to remain silent, and not have your silence used against you in any way. Do you understand those rights? Yes. Any question about any of those? No, sir. Do you wish to waive those rights and plead guilty according to the agreement? Yes. If I accept your plea, you can't come back later and tell me that it wasn't your own free choice to enter it because of any threats made to you or uh, any promises outside the plea agreement or any reason at all. Do you understand that? Yes. Also, when you plead guilty, you lose the right to appeal. And if you wanted to appeal, you have to get permission, uh, which you seek by filing an application. The types of issues that you could raise on an appeal after a plea are very, very limited. Do you understand that? Yes. All right. The plea agreement provides in exchange for your plea to the charge, there's a sentence agreement that you'll be sentenced pursuant to Section 7411 of Michigan's Public Health Code, which would mean you'd be placed on a probationary term. And if you complete the terms of probation, it'd be a non public file. And so you wouldn't have a conviction on your record. Do you understand the terms of that agreement? Yes. That sentence agreement is not binding on me. If I didn't want to follow it, I wouldn't have to. But if I didn't follow it, you'd be allowed to withdraw your plea. Do you understand that? Yes. Now, that's unless you engage in some misconduct between now and then, violating your bond, not appearing for court, committing a new crime. Uh, that type of behavior could cause you to forfeit your right to withdraw that plea, even if I didn't give you the 74 letter. Do you understand that? Yes. Other than the plea agreement, has anybody promised you anything to get your plea guilty? No. Has anybody threatened you? Is it your own free choice to enter that plea? Yes. Knowing all this, how do you wish to plead to the charge of possession of methamphetamine? Okay. On or about February 20th of this year, were you in Sheboygan County? Uh, yeah. And uh, you were in a vehicle? <clears throat> Was there some methamphetamine either in that vehicle or on your person? Yeah. Did you know what the substance was? Yeah. And did you, either by yourself or with somebody else, have possession or control over, the, over that substance? Yeah. All right, Mr. Uh, Wurgo. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you have any lawful authority to possess that substance? No. Mr. Wurgo, you satisfied with the factual basis? I am, Your Honor. Miss uh, or Mr. Uh, Julian. I am as well. <clears throat> Mr. Wurgo, uh, are you aware of any other crimes that start to None. No. Mr. Julian. No. Mr. Wurgo, in your judgment, if I comply with MCR 6.302? You have, Your Honor. Mr. Julian. <laughs> yes. All right, Ms. Johnson, I find that your plea is knowingly, understandingly, and voluntarily made, and that there is a sufficient basis, in fact, in law to believe that you're guilty of that offense. So I hereby accept the plea. We could schedule sentencing for May 14th at 11 a.m. 
you'll have to cooperate with an interview with the probation department uh, and be your responsibility to get that scheduled <clears throat> so they can prepare a report for me before the sentencing. Uh, anything further, Mr. Virgo? No, Your Honor. Ms. Woodruff or Mr. Gilly? No, thank you. All right, we'll see you then, Ms. Johnson. Record in the 53rd Circuit Court for the County of Sheboygan. We are providing public access both in the courtroom and also online. And our first case on our morning docket here is uh, an arraignment in People State of Michigan versus Jonathan Carney, file 24 6811 FH. Counsel, please state your appearances. Jeremiah Buffalo, we're going on behalf of Mr. Carney, who is seated to my right. Okay, good morning. We are uh, here for a arraignment. Have you had a chance to review the information with Mr. Kearney? Uh, yes, Your Honor, we have. And Mr. Kearney would uh, be uh, entering his not, not guilty plea and uh, waiving the reading, Your Honor. Um, uh, I have had an opportunity to review the uh, pretrial statement sent over from prosecution. There are no objections, additions, or corrections. I don't have that because that's only if you guys submit that as a waiver. So. Uh, is there a forensic center referral requested? No, Your Honor. What's the estimated length of trial? Uh, Your Honor, I believe one day. Okay. All right. And Mr. Kearney, I won't read the formal allegations, but just advise you it is a charge of perjury in a court proceeding with a habitual fourth notice. Uh, with the habitual notice, it would be punishable by, uh, by life. And uh, we'll enter a not guilty plea to that charge. We'll schedule it then. What do we have? Okay. Is does he have another case pending up here already? No, we have a district court sentencing that he's sitting on right now. There's one felony that's still going. Just oh, it over. hasn't been bound over. Okay. Okay. All right. I was just trying to match up any dates, so but we don't have to try to do that. We could schedule this then for a docket call um, May 14th at 1040. All right, anything further from the people? No. Thank you. From the defense? No, Your Honor. Okay, we'll see you May 14th. Okay, that's Your Honor. All right, and next we have people of the state of Michigan versus Darren Moyer, file 24-6808-H. And uh, Mr. Virgo, you have a chance to review the information with Mr. Moyer. Uh, yes, Your Honor, we have. <coughs> and uh, does he wish to have its allegations read? Uh, no, Your Honor, uh, we would waive the reading. Um, Your Honor, uh, I believe that uh, this matter, uh, we'd be looking at a one-day trial on it. A uh, forensic center referral is requested in this matter. Is requested? Yes, Your Honor. Is the competency or criminal responsibility or both? Both, Your Honor. So what we'll do then is um, the court will prepare the necessary orders and we'll schedule this then for a status conference. We'll have to place the case on hold until the issue of competency is resolved. And we'll schedule this then for a status conference uh, June 11th at 10 a.m. Is Mr. Mr. Moyer is currently serving a sentence, is that right? Uh, yes, um, Your Honor. I believe that his outdate might be relatively soon, though. Okay, so we'll uh, we'll make the referrals and we'll be back for status conference June 11th. If we get the reports done sooner, of course, we'll convene the hearing within five days as required. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, see you then, Mr. Moyer. Mm -hmm. At the attorneys, because we've got a couple things up here with you. One is we're scheduled for a probation violation hearing on an allegation that you uh, were in possession of a controlled substance uh, back last July and uh, are facing charges for that, uh, clonazepam. But then also, I have signed a warrant that I'll arraign you on right now that uh, you have violated your probation in a second incident. It's alleged that on or about April 1st, you were found to be in possession of methamphetamine and also that you were subsequently charged with delivery or manufacture of methamphetamine. You do have the right to have a hearing on those allegations and the right to the assistance of your attorney. You're on probation to me for possession of methamphetamine, which is a felony carrying a maximum of 10 years and or $15,000 fine. 
So what I can do is schedule this then, now that we've arraigned you on the new one, probably schedule both of these violations for a hearing two weeks from the day on April 23rd at 2.50 in the afternoon. Okay. Are you, uh, when's your next court date in Alger County? Um, I'm not sure when. Um, I was hoping to uh, get a, get the probation hold off and get bonded out so I can go to the last Bureau of Commission Bible Trading Center because they accepted my application. Okay. Well, I think for now, um, I, what I talked with the attorneys about is it's um, the probation officer who's not able to be here today uh, in the warrant says that your charge is delivery manufacture of methamphetamine. So we need to sort out what exact charges you're facing up there, whether it's a delivery manufacturer or possession or what's going on. So um, it's, a, it's, a, it's actually a, um, a sales, I think it's a yeah, okay. Don't tell me anything more about. Don't tell me anything more about the situation. Just if that's the charge, okay. I would not be under those circumstances. Uh, even with the possession, to be a close call. But I would not be removing my uh, probation hold at this point. But we'll have okay. a hearing in two weeks, and once we sort out what's going on, then we can figure out what we want to do about it. Okay. Okay. All right. But for now, uh, I'm going to have you held without release. And we'll get an order up to uh, Alger County so that they, they know that uh, that there's no bond on this matter and you to be held without relief. If they're not holding you up here, I guess then we'd have to go get you. But, um, but we'll let the jails sort that out. Anything Can further, Mr. Gill? No, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Can I say something? Yes. Um, I'd just like you know on my probation, like I do have all my fines paid off, and I was doing really good. Um, I passed all my drug screens and everything up until just recently. I, um, until this recent charges, I got, you know, I slipped up. So I was hoping to get this hold off of here so I can go to Mission Bible Training Center and you might finish off my probation there. Okay, I'm not going to allow that today. We're going to have a hearing in a couple weeks, but you're going to be held until then. All right. Okay. All right, have a good day. Yeah. So, Ms. Doc, are you, uh, is that Alicia Doc Stater? Yes. All right. So this is People v. Dockstater, file 23-6661-FH, but for a um, probation violation hearing. And uh, Mr. Gilbert, how are we proceeding today? Uh, Your Honor, I believe she is going to admit that she's entered a plea in Presque County. All right. I did meet with her this morning in the Presque County Jail. All right. And I did uh, I did take that plea. And so, Ms. Dockstader, do you understand that you've got the right to have a hearing on this violation? Yes, Your Honor. All right. And uh, are you agreeing that I can take judicial notice of the plea that you entered in Presque County? Yes. All right. So what I'll do then is... Um, I'll take judicial notice of the circuit's own uh, records and find out a preponderance of the evidence that the violation has been established. Thank Any objection much. to that, Mr. Gilbert? Not at all, Your Honor. Thank you. Ms. Uh, who's handling this one? Ms. Ms. Any Pichelle. objection to that process? No, no. All right. And so what we'll do is, um, do you know when I set the sentencing date for over there? I'm not, I'm not her attorney over there. Oh, yeah. No. I'm sorry. Ms. Dockstader, do you know what your sentencing date is in Presque Hill County? It is April 22nd. Okay. Well, this is a probation one, so why don't we uh, do this one on April 23rd Perfect. and see if they can get the report out soon enough. So let's schedule this for... <clears throat> um, April 23rd at 2.10 in the afternoon. Anything further, Mr. Gilbert? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Ms. Miller? No, oh, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay, so Ms. Doxtater, I'll see you on Monday, April 22nd in Presque Hill County, and then Tuesday, April 23rd at 210 here in Sheboygan County. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. You have a great day. You too. All right. So in People v. Hurley, file 23-6692FC, I think... Uh, the parties are still hammering out a little bit of a detail or 
final double checks. So, uh, Mr. Juliet, you'd like another docket call? Yes, just one more docket call. Uh, we'll, we'll put it over just a couple of weeks then to April 23rd at 1.30 in the afternoon. Just give me a call. Good. You're all set, Mr. Good.